You don't feel time passing, you feel its aftertaste. It's in how old songs hit different now, and how you blink and an entire year vanishes without warning. I bet you barely remember March, even though it just ended. We live side by side with time every single day, but we rarely notice it, until it's already behind us. And somewhere along the way, maybe in your early 20s, maybe sooner, maybe later, you realise, each year feels shorter than the last. Time isn't technically speeding up, but it feels like it is, and that feeling never really goes away. When you were a kid, a single summer break felt like an entire lifetime. You could remember the way sunlight hit your window in the morning, the exact sound birds made then. Every moment was soaked in awareness. You waited forever for birthdays, for holidays, for weekends. Time was slower because you noticed it. Your brain was constantly lit up. First day at school, first time you fell off your bike, first sleepover. Every experience left a landmark in your memory, and those landmarks stretch time. But then you grow up. The world gets repetitive. You wake up, maybe scroll a bit, go to work or school, eat, stare at a screen, go to sleep. If you're lucky, you have another thing or two to be excited about. But then, repeat. You stop noticing, and that's when time starts to fly. There's something called the reminiscence bump. A psychological phenomenon where people recall the most vivid memories from the ages of about 10 to 30. It's not just nostalgia, it's because that's when most of our firsts happen. First love, first job, first heartbreak. Your brain is alive, creating new pathways, and time feels stretched, but slowly that novelty fades. Life becomes copy-pasted. You fall asleep at the wheel of your own timeline and the blur begins. There's a math to it. The older you get, the smaller each year becomes proportionally. To a five-year-old, one year is 20% of their life. That's massive. At 30, just over 3%. At 60, barely more than 1.5%. The slices shrink, and with them, our perception of time. Paul Janet, a French philosopher in the 1800s, wrote about this. He suggested that the apparent length of any time period is relative to your age. So from the perspective of experience, life might already be halfway over by your mid-twenties. That means the first 23, 24 years pass as fast as the rest 57. Let that sit for a second. That might be why childhood feels like a slow, rich novel, and adulthood feels like flipping through pages too fast to even read. Einstein once said, Put your hand on a hot stove for a minute, and it seems like an hour. Sit with a pretty girl for an hour, and it seems like a minute. That's relativity. Even physics agrees, time doesn't behave the way we expect. There's time dilation, where astronauts moving at high speeds age more slowly than people on Earth. That's not a metaphor, that's reality. Time bends, it stretches, it slips, depending on where you are, how fast you're going, and even what you're paying attention to. And yet, the most intense changes in how we feel time aren't happening in space. They're happening in your kitchen, in your bedroom, on your walk to work. It's when you realise that another week just disappeared, another birthday passed, another holiday came and went and barely left a mark. It's not that you're doing something wrong, it's just that your brain has stopped paying attention. In 2021, a film came out. Old. A group of people find themselves stuck on a beach where time moves rapidly, or about 17,000 times more than normal. That means an hour is about two years. The kids grew up in hours. The adults aged into elderly versions of themselves before it was dawn. It sounds surreal, even a bit ridiculous. But somehow, it feels real. Because in a way, that's what aging actually feels like. Like you're standing still while the world is accelerating. You see it in your parents' faces, in the way your friends talk about back pain, in how high school feels like yesterday and 10 years ago at the same time. Old is unsettling, not because it's science fiction, but because it strips away the illusion. It shows us a life in fast forward, and deep down we recognize it, because we're already on that beach. We've been on it the whole time. We age in slow motion, but the result is the same. One day, you're riding a bike without training wheels. The next, you're wondering when your back started hurting just from sitting too long. Then your friends start having kids. Your favorite artists start retiring. Your parents start to look small. You begin measuring life not in birthdays, but in funerals. Time doesn't feel linear anymore. It feels like it's folding in on itself. One decade bleeds into the next. Your twenties vanish while you're still figuring out how to be twenty. So what do we do with that? If time is slipping, how do we live inside it without letting it disappear on us? 
The answer isn't to slow time down, it's to fill it. Because we can't rewind the clock. We can't go back and stretch out the years that already passed. But we can make the years we're in feel bigger. Remember that three-day trip that somehow felt like a month? That's because your brain was alive. It was making memories, laying down new data. That's the hack. You don't fight time by freezing it. You fight it by feeling it deeply. There's something called time density. The more information your brain processes during a stretch of time, the longer that time feels when you look back on it. That's why trauma feels endless. That's why childhood feels infinite. Because your brain was taking in so much it stretched time out. And when you do the same thing every day, your brain stops recording. Days become harder to tell apart. And that's when life starts to feel like a blur. There's also this thing called psychological momentum. We don't just measure time personally. We also measure it socially. School years, calendar holidays, graduations, anniversaries. These are markers, milestones. And when they start to blur together, when your birthday feels like just another Wednesday, time stops being marked by change. It gets defined by repetition. That's when you start losing the thread. But you can get it back. You can choose to notice again, to break the loop, to do something, even one small thing, differently. Because novelty is what time remembers. Your brain remembers new. You can't add more years to your life, but you can add more life to your years. You can sit on your porch and notice how the light hits the pavement. You can actually listen when your friend laughs. You can take a different way home just because you never have. These things don't slow time, they anchor it. They give your mind something to hold on to. We think of aging as a gentle slide, but sometimes it hits like a truck. You look in the mirror and see a stranger. You hear a song you used to love and realize it came out 15 years ago. You walk into a place you once knew by heart and it feels like a museum. It's not just that the world changed, it's that you did. You became someone else slowly. So slowly, you didn't even notice it happening. Time is the most unknown of all unknown things, Aristotle once said. We try to capture it with calendars, clocks, time zones, but it keeps slipping through all of it. Even when we try to hold it, it holds us tighter, and somehow it keeps getting faster. We say time flies when you are having fun, but why does it also fly when you're not? Why do the boring days blur just as fast as the exciting ones? It's because we've stopped seeing time as a canvas. We treat it like a hallway, a corridor to the next obligation. But time is not the hallway. Time is the room. It's every room you've ever been in, every second you were alive inside your own life. And most of us aren't. We're sleepwalking through it, waiting for some moment to snap us awake. But the moment is already here. It always has been. Seneca wrote, it is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Maybe time isn't speeding up. Maybe we're just giving it less to hold on to. Less to remember, less to feel. So if you want time to slow down, give it something to stretch around. Learn something new. Pay attention to things you normally ignore. Talk to someone without checking your phone. Go outside and feel the air on your skin. Not because it's productive, but because it's now. Because this moment is all you ever really have. At the end of your life, you won't remember every single day. But if you're lucky, you'll remember enough. Enough to feel like it was long. Enough to feel like you were really here. Because time isn't something you watch. It's something you notice. Something you live. Something you fill. And you can start doing just that right now.